What is up guys? So last week I hosted a live webinar where I literally gave the step-by-step -step strategy I use and the same strategy I teach my clients on how to get five clients per month just using LinkedIn organically. I wasn't gonna give the recording away, but then I was like, hmm, gotta be generous. So I'm giving the full recording away of that entire training. So make sure to watch this all the way to the end take notes and apply it. And remember, if you ever have any questions, here is my LinkedIn profile. I will also put a link to my LinkedIn profile in the description below, so you can feel free to ask me questions there. But make sure to watch this video in full, take notes, apply it. It will help you get five clients per month using LinkedIn as quickly as possible. So watch that and I'll see you soon. Super excited to have everybody here. Like I said, what we're gonna be going over uh, today more than anything else is how to get five clients before the end of 2023. I know a lot of you here have, you know, coaching businesses, consulting businesses. Some of you I know personally, some of you, I know it's first time, you know, first time meeting me. So either way, like I said, I'm going to make this as valuable to you as I possibly can. So all I ask is, yeah, pay attention, take notes. Um, I will be recording this. So don't worry if you, you got a drop or anything like that, let me know. But hopefully you can stay to the end because if you do stay to the end, I'll be going over some other you know, bonus just for the people who stick around to the very end. Okay, so what we'll do today, set the agenda. What I want to go over very much so is I'm going to go over everything start to finish from how to find your buyers on LinkedIn to how to convert them, how to get them interested, everything pretty much you can possibly think of. I'm going to try and jam pack. I know we only have an hour today, maybe less because it's already, you know, 37, so about 53 minutes. But I promise to make this, you know, as valuable to you as possible more than anything else. Um, I will say, as usual, if you've ever attended my webinars before, my online trainings, you'll know that if you stick until the end, I always have an added bonus that I'm actually going to give to the people who stick until the end, right? So I'll actually show you right now, again, what that bonus is. So if you take a look right here at my screen, it should be loading right now. So this is a group, my group coaching doc that I have with my clients. Um, and every lesson we've pretty much had until, you know, all of 2023 is right here. So what I've decided to do is actually, we actually went over a really, really good lesson, uh, as a group last week where I was explaining, you know, the best kinds of contents to publish on LinkedIn that actually brings you your buyers. So I'm going to be giving that all the way, the full lesson, the full recording to everyone who sticks around to the end. So that's kind of like my, my ask of you, you stick around to the end, you'll get this lesson. And we'll be, we'll be all good to go. If you can't stick around to the end, you know, I'll give you this lesson, unfortunately. <laughs> so please stick around. I promise it'll be worth it. And trust me, this lesson is the clients loved it. I actually think a few of my clients will uh, probably be upset that I'm giving this away for free. But like I said, I, I really do try to give as much away on the webinars um, as much as I can. So with that being said, let's actually officially dive into the lesson. So let me share my screen. And then five, by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to just ask in the chat. Uh, but we will have like a specific time at the end. I'll leave a couple minutes at the end so you can ask any specific questions you might have, anything like that. So yeah, feel free uh, to ask away. Or if you want to ask in the chat, uh, go ahead and do that. And I'll, you know, if we have a moment, I'll be able to answer that. So there'll be basically two times to ask questions. So let's dive right into this. So let me know if you can see my screen right now. It should be good. I'm going to zoom in just because... We can, is it all clear where everyone can see my screen right now? Okay, so great. So like I said, the goal of this lesson today is to teach you exactly how to get five clients before the end of 2023. Now, with that being said, right, we need to figure out the math, right? Before we can even break into, you know, how, what the marketing is, we just got to break it all down. Like what's it going to take to get five clients, right? That's the first and most important question. So first thing here is our goal. So our goal here is five new clients, right? Simple, straightforward. Now, I chose the price point of $5,000 simply because that's typically the average price point of a coaching program, right? Most coaching programs range between anywhere between $3,000 to $10,000. So I kind of just picked a bit of a middle ground. So with that being said, the total cash expectation of what we're trying to, what we're trying to achieve here is $25,000, right? So five new clients at $5,000 equals $25,000. Oh, that's the goal, right? Again, tweak this to your pricing. If you're pricing 6,000, 7,000, 2,000, 3,000, that's fine. I'm just going with this because it's a round number to work with. Okay. So now the way I've also looked at this is we got to look at the timeline, right? So right now is November 22nd. January 1st is about six weeks away. But 
with that being said, I don't really count the week of Christmas because everyone's going to kind of be with their families, all that stuff. So that week we can kind of rule out. So with that being said, we have five weeks until the end of the year to get five clients, right? It's starting next week. So as of next week, you'll have five weeks. So the way I look at that then is we just need one client per week, right? If we get one client per week, we will achieve our goal of five clients by the end of the year, right? And again, that's excluding the Christmas week because I don't expect anyone to be buying too many things, you know, all being online at that time. So I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work as realistically as possible that uh, with everything that I'm saying right now. So now that we know we need to get one client per week from now until, or from next week till the end of the, to, to the end of the year, now we got to ask ourselves, okay, how is this going to happen, right? Like, what is it going to take to get clients purchasing from us? Always remember this, right? Just, this is the kind of the rule of online sales, online coaching. Your income is directly correlated to the number of sales calls you schedule, right? We're all in the coaching, which is a high ticket business, right? If you sell a product or service over a thousand dollars, you're pretty much in the high ticket space, which means that people need to get on the phone with you in order to purchase from you, right? That's just the nature of it. It's not like going to, you know, Walmart and buying a blender for like $200 or something like that, right? That's more of an impulse purchase. People need to be able to speak with you to learn from you about what you can offer, what you're offering and how you can help them, right? So with that being said, an average close rate is 35%, right? So if you're getting warm leads, which I mean, people who are engaging with you, people who are in liking your posts on LinkedIn, you know, showing up on your feed, things of that nature, you should be closing at about 35%, right? Because again, this whole approach that I'm about to teach you is about client attraction. I don't want you knocking on doors of random people who have no idea who you are and like sending weird, uncomfortable, awkward messages. That's not the point of that. That's outbound marketing, right? That is that is completely out of the scope of what we do, right? What we, what we do is inbound marketing. And the purpose of inbound marketing is all we want to do is put our message out there, get people who resonate with our message to come into our ecosystem, right? That is the goal more than anything else. Just get these people to raise their hand, right? That's all we want. So with that being said, that's why we can close at a 35% rate because we're getting warmer buyers. But you know me, if you do know me, I always like to play conservative with numbers, right? I always like to use more conservative numbers because it gives us a better depiction of reality in case anything, any hiccups happen. So I say, let's operate with a 20% close rate, right? A 20% close rate means that you will close one new client for every five sales calls that you schedule, right? Because one divided by five is 0.2, 0.2 multiplied by hundred is 20%, right? So 20% close rate. So now all, this is the, this is actually the golden number, not five clients, one new client. The golden number is actually five sales calls. If you can book five sales calls and close at a 20% rate, you'll get a new client. Simple as that, right? Five new sales calls, five sales calls equals one new client. Okay. So now if we want five new clients, all we do is we just multiply the numbers, right? So what we need by the end of 2023 is we need 25 sales calls. That's your goal. 25 sales calls by the end of 2023, and you will get five new clients. But don't be too overwhelmed by this number, to be honest with you. Just focus on this, the weekly total. Five new sales calls is one sales call a day, right? One sales call a day. Now, with that being said, it's not going to be as linear as you, as, as as black and white as that. Like you might have four calls one week, three calls the next week, seven calls the week after. That's fine, right? As long as the totals work out to, to, to 25, you'll be fine or even close to 25. And again, remember, we're operating with a conservative close rate. If you're, if we were operating operating with a r average close rate, it would be even less. It would be, you know, 20% or sorry, it would be like 20 calls, right? So it would be, it would be, so you don't need to worry so much. Okay, cool. Is everything making sense so far? I see Susan's really engaged. So I see you there, uh, but to everyone else is what I'm saying, like clear, right? Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Awesome. So again, we book 25 calls, again, conservatively speaking, meaning that we're, we're shooting for a higher number. All we, that will result in five new clients, five new clients through the door, right? And again, if we're operating at a $5,000 price point, multiply that by five, that's $25,000. Again, pick your number. If your number is 3,000, multiply three by five, $15,000. It's important to also know the cash flow, right? You, you should like, just getting a client is important, but you should know how much cash flow you want to generate because this allows you to actually scale your business, build it for the long term, right? I I would genuinely say everybody here should be doing 
within the next, after this lesson, at very minimum, you should be doing about 10 grand per month. That's what I want for you to set for yourself, right? 10 grand per month for a coaching business is a hygiene check, right? It means that the systems are working properly. It does, like, I'm not saying like, you know, you're going to, you know, do like, a, I'm not, basically what I'm trying to say here is that 10 grand a month is a hygiene check, which, because it means that your systems are working, right? So I want to get you there. Right. So regardless of your price point, as long as you're over a thousand bucks for your coaching services, you should be at 10. You, the, you should consistently be hitting $10,000 a month. And if you're not, it means that there's something wrong within the systems. Right. And that's what we're going to identify as well. Okay. So now the math is all taken care of. Now we know the goal. Right. And I'm going to operate with this specific goal of 25 sales calls per the month uh, and five sales calls a week. Right. Everything all good. I don't see anything in the chat. So I'll keep going. Okay. Cool. So the math is all set. So now we got to figure out what do we need to do? We'll go change that to 25. Okay. So now, now we got to figure out what do we need to actually do to get those sales calls, right? Now we know that we need the sales calls, which is great. Fantastic. We figured that part out, but how do we figure out what needs to be done in order to get five sales calls? Now I'm telling you this right now. I was at myself, right? I was at a mastermind event last weekend and these people were doing Big time numbers. I'm talking about like 300,000 a month, 500,000 a month, a couple of guys doing a million a month. And every, and I'll tell you one thing everybody follows this exact same format that I'm about to teach you. It doesn't matter if you're making $10,000 a month or you're making 10, like 2 million a month. I'm telling you, they all thought, follow the same format here. This is what you need to really like entrench into your brain about online marketing. And the beauty is it's very simple to get clients, to get buyers consistently, there's three things you need. You need, you need traffic which is simply getting new buyers aware of you and your services. So for example, Eric, right? Your goal each day should be to get 20 people, for example, to just become aware of you. Doesn't mean they want to buy. Doesn't mean they're interested in buying, but they need to know about who you are and what you do. Think about, for example, Apple, right? The iPhone. The iPhone 15 has been is, is, is out. I'm aware of the iPhone 15. I know it's out. I don't want to buy it, but at least I know it's out. And you know what? That's mission achieved. You ever drive on the highway and you see those billboards for like cars, Toyota, Honda, Apple, whatever. They're just trying to get traffic. They just want awareness, right? They're not trying to get you to actually buy. They just want to plant the image in your mind. That's it. I just want you to know that we exist. I want you to know that we are here and we have the same goal, right? Get people to know you and your services exist. Those are the, that's the goal of traffic. Second thing is content. Now this is, I mean, they're all equally as important, to be honest, because one doesn't go without the other. But content is probably where most people mix up. People create a lot of content, but they don't create content, right? And, I'll, and don't worry, we're going to go over that as well. Remember this always, that the purpose of content is to establish yourself as an expert with your audience and get them to look up to you. They re This is so crucial. They need to look up to you. you I, and I'm not saying this in an egotistical way, but you need to. there needs to be some level of superiority between you and your potential buyer. Because if they don't look up to you, they won't buy. People buy from coaches who think they know more than them. That's why they invest, right? If I'm going to work out with a personal trainer at the gym, I want to make sure he understands the fundamentals of my body and how the muscles work better than I do. Right. Because if he doesn't believe if I don't believe that, why would I work with him or her? Right. Same idea. So I'm telling you the same thing. Like you, your content needs to be very, very much established around the idea of, of showing your authority. The more that your authority is there, the more that people are going to want to buy from you. And then the third. And again, we're going to go into all this, by the way. And then the third thing is conversion. So that is having a system to turn viewers into buyers. So here is the thing. Nothing works without all three of these. You could have the best conversion system in the world. I'm talking about elite. Invest millions of dollars into the best conversion system that like, you know, nobody has ever seen before. But if you have no traffic, it's useless. Right? It's like pipes. You know, water if there's no water flowing through the pipes, the pipes are useless. Right? It's the same idea. You have to understand. So you need all the three pieces. For example, I um I had this uh, lady enroll into my program a few months ago, and this is a true story. So she had about about two hundred thousand followers on LinkedIn. So huge influencer was getting all this engagement on her content. You know everything. I, I was almost surprised that we got on the call. Like, oh, okay, nice. We're like, what's up? And she was basically telling me she's like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm only doing about like five six k a month, and I'm like, that's pretty crazy considering you have hundreds of thousands of followers. And 
I looked at her business and immediately, immediately I could tell what was wrong. She had the traffic, she had the content, she had no conversion system. Boom. And then literally it was super easy. Put in a conversion system. Literally, I swear to you, I swear to you, within 24 hours, she made a $5,000 sale. So it's great. So it's just, it's very interesting to just, uh, just it's, it's so not even interesting. It's important to be aware of where the problems are. I could look at any one of your businesses right now and point out exactly where the issue is, right? Is it a traffic issue? Is it a content issue? Is it a conversion issue? And to be honest, it's usually a bit of a mix of all, but there's usually one that's like worse than the others. And if you can fix that, you will be all good to go. Okay, so everything making sense so far? Yes? Okay, let me take a look at the chat right now. Uh, that's fabulous. Okay, great. All right, glad that's a nice thing to read. Okay, cool. And then I see Susan's thumbs up. Susan, I appreciate the reactions. Uh, <laughs> so this is great. Okay, cool. So now we got to go into how do you do these activities? Now, typically, I'm going to be honest, I don't actually teach like how. I say that more for like the paid stuff, but I'm going to teach you all today. How? How do you find your buyers on LinkedIn? How do you add? So remember, with traffic, what was the goal? Get buyers aware of you, right? Get buyers aware. So what does that mean, though? Like, what are the what is the income? I call these daily income producing activities. What are the daily income producing activities you should be doing to get these buyers aware of you? This is really, really, really important to know, right? So in this case, remember, your goal to get buyers aware of you is you need to add twenty connections per day, right? Sounds simple enough. But now the question becomes, how do we add 20 connections? How do we find buyers? Especially, let's say you're a mindset coach or you're a life coach or you're you know, a high performance coach or even if you're a career coach, doesn't matter, right? Let's say that that's the case. Not many people are going to have a sign on their head saying, hey, I need, I need life coaching or I need support. I need this or I need nutritional coaching. No, they, people don't advertise these things, right? So how do you find them? Now, I'll tell you one thing. Don't use Sales Navigator. Don't use these tools. You don't need them. You don't need them. In fact, I actually argue against outbound tools. And I'll tell you why. Because you're only targeting based on demographic and you're not targeting based on the problem, right? For example, for example, let's say I was helping, let's say I was a high performance coach and I was helping CEOs save 30 hours a week. The problem when you use all these other tools is, oh, we'll help you find CEOs in the US or we'll help you find CEOs based in like the Florida area, right? Okay, fine. You found the CEOs, but you have no idea if they actually have the problem that you're solving, right? Then you just go through this annoying cycle of just trying to find buyers, trying to find making, trying to get them interested. You know what I mean? Like it's an awkward convert. It's an awkward conversation. You just don't want to go about that. So now the question is, how do we find people with the highest probability of buying? And I'm going to show you this. So let me share my screen right now. So let me know if you can see LinkedIn. Can you see LinkedIn on my screen? Just give me a thumbs up or something. Okay, cool. Susan, I'm, I'm operating with you, with you, Susan, right now. And I see Eric gave me the thumbs up too. Okay, cool. So here's what you got to do to actually find your buyers. And, and, we'll, and, we'll, and, and this is what you got to do here. So first thing you want to do is let's say, let's go with an example here. And I, I um, let's say I'm a career coach, right? Let's say I, I'm a career coach who helps women in tech, right? Hypothetically, I'm a career coach who helps women in tech. So how do I find women in tech who are looking for better jobs or who are looking to improve their career? First thing, first thing I would do is I would actually go to the search bar here and type in women in tech. Just go in here and type in women in tech on search bar, right? Then first place I would go look beyond anywhere else. So I'll go look at events. Go and look at events on LinkedIn. So let's see what's going on here. So let's say Let's go. Let's look here. Okay. Women in Tech Global Conference 2024. This event has 9,000 people attending. So let's go take a look here at this event. So just all, and this is just one event I'm looking at. So this is an event happening in April. Cool. I will actually go and look at the attendees. Take a look at this. Okay. Nice. And you want to know something interesting that I noticed about LinkedIn? The first couple pages of your list are going to be people in your in the closest geographic region uh, to you, right? So I'm, you know, I'm based out of Toronto, Canada. So obviously, as you can see here, the majority of the people that I'm looking at first are people in my local region, which is great. So again, I'm looking for women in tech right now. Let's see how many we can find in just a couple seconds here. Nicole, product and service management in Ontario and MD, woman in tech. Let's see who else. You know, S Samantha Martinez, software engineer, woman in tech. Sarah Wilson, technical product owner, right? And I literally, in about eight seconds right now, just found three women in tech. 
Now, guess what? There's a hundred pages I can go through. A hundred. Now, here's the thing. I'm not just finding random women in tech right now. I am finding women in tech who are looking to solve a problem. They're attending a conference, right? They're clearly looking to advance their career in some way, shape, or form right now, right? They're clearly looking to better themselves in some way, shape, or form, right? So this is how you need to go and find your buyers. So don't use advanced search or any of this kind of stuff. Go and look at events. Like, trust me, look at enough. Like you can see there's, there's so many you can take a look at here, right? So here's an, yeah, let me see one more here. Women in technology form. Yeah, maybe extraordinary women in tech discusses artificial intelligence. Not bad, right? So we could just start to look at these events and start to bring our buyers to, towards us, right? And all we got to do is go look at the attendees of these events and boom, you're building an audience of buyers. I'm telling you, this is this is the highest full, highest quality buyers you can get. Why? Because all of these people here are trying to solve a problem. They've raised their hand. This is what I'm talking about when I mentioned client attraction, right? This is specifically what I mentioned, right? When you are trying to find your buyers, you want to find people who have the highest probability of purchasing from you. The high, and the, how do you find people who have the highest probability of purchasing from you? People who, who, who can at least show that they're trying to solve a problem, right? People who can show that they're trying to get somewhere, right? They're engaged. They're doing things. So this is how you get your traffic. I'm telling you right now, if you just did this alone right now, like, you would, you would, your audience, your buyers, everything would just massively, massively, massively increase. So definitely, definitely give that all a shot. Okay. Everything else making sense so far, what I'm saying here? Okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's get back here. All right. Give me one second. <laughs> I think I closed all my tabs. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Um, okay, here we go. Perfect. Got it all back. Okay. So let's go back here and keep going all right okay cool all right let me know if you can see my screen again cool okay so let's keep going okay cool so ellen you mentioned so you see the names then what you want to add them remember the goal is to add them as connections again we're not trying to get these these for example these women in tech here to buy from me right now I'm not that's not that's my, not my goal remember this this is something I'm glad you mentioned this all I, I really do and remember this always your goal is not to get people to buy yet your goal is to get somebody to the next step right the next step so when I add a connection my goal is not to get them to buy my goal is to get them to accept my connection request that's it that's all I want from you at this moment right? Just get them to the next step. The problem is too many people try and jump the gun. They try and say like, okay, I'm going to add this connection. Then they'll add the connection and be like, hmm, how do I get this person to buy from me? doesn't make sense. It doesn't, you know what I mean? There's no trust established. There's none of that. Now I'm not saying this needs to be some long extended process. This can be done in like a day or two, right? Where you add them and then they think, but I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've added someone as a connection just from this exact strategy I'm showing you. They end up coming to my profile, see some of my content, book a call with me, and then within 24 hours, they become a client, right? But they still need to go through the steps. Sometimes the steps happen faster. Sometimes the steps happen slower, right? But at the end of the day, the steps need to happen. They need to They need to be, in, they need to be nurtured by you, right? So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so let's go continue. So now we know traffic. Now the next thing we need to look at then is content, right? So content is very simple, right? Not simple, and it's simple to know. It's like the, so. I would say content is like the game of soccer: easiest game to learn, hardest game to master. Right. So, the purpose of content, like we were saying, is to get people to look up to you. Now, truthfully, if you want a number, because I know a lot of people like specific numbers, how much should I post? How often should I post? When should I post? Answer to that question is: you should be publishing five times per week minimum. You should be publishing at nine a.m. in your local time zone or the time zone of your buyers. I personally like to publish at nine a.m. New York time. And I'll tell you why, because I get pretty much the entire first world at that time. If I publish actually 9.30 a.m. if I want to be more specific, but nine anywhere between 9 to 10 a.m. If I publish at 9 a.m. New York time, right? Guess what? I'm getting everyone in New York. I'm getting everybody in England because it's only 2, 3 p.m. their time. You go all the way east. I'm still getting everyone in Dubai and I'm still getting everyone on the West Coast in California while they're still waking up, right? So 9, 9.30, anywhere between 9 and 10 a.m. New York time is the best time to publish content on uh, on LinkedIn, right? Because you're getting the highest amount of reach. But again, figure out where your buyers are. If your buyers are in Australia, for example, well then yeah, maybe 9.30 a.m. is not the best time. Figure out where your buyers are located and then go, I'm just assuming that the majority of all your buyers are based in North America, 
or you know just typical like first world english speaking countries so if that's the case then i would do nine between 9 and 10 a.m are the are the key times to publish right so that's that okay so hang on let me check the chat real quick do you suggest sending a message with the connection request yeah i mean look it depends on your buyers but yeah definitely i mean I, and again your connection message should not be some kind of you know let me sell you or anything like that what i like to do with my connection message and i do send a connection message myself and the answer to that is I sim my goal is simply to get my audience to just, like I said, the goal is to get them to accept my connection request. So I try and I, I offer them my content, right? I don't offer them my services or anything like that. I simply say like, look, I post a ton of content about how to get clients from LinkedIn. If you'd like to, if you'd like that kind of, if you'd like to see that kind of content, let's connect, right? So the, it's a very, very, very low barrier to entry. It's like, okay, cool. I get to learn free content about how to get clients from LinkedIn. Sounds fantastic. I'd love to learn from uh, from Sarum. Sounds great. Okay, so that's what I do. So I I do it. I know some people don't do it. Again, you got to understand your audience a little bit. So now I want to go to a little bit of a content, right? But like I was saying, you know the best time to post. But what kind of content actually gets the highest amount of buyers, right? What kind of content gets people to raise their hand and want to actually buy from you? These are really important things you need to be you need to be aware of, right? So I'll give you an example here. I want to pull out one post it was when was this it wasn't too long ago it was um i made a post here this one right here i made this post right here made me fifteen thousand dollars this single post fifteen thousand dollars from this single post right here i'm going to explain to you why how and the formula so you can understand why and so you can use it for yourself here right let me read this post to you right now so i said yesterday while i was in line at starbucks i heard a man talk about chat gpt to his wife he said i checked our flight itinerary but ChatGPT said there were better options available. This man was clearly in his 50s or 60s, yet he spoke as if ChatGPT was an everyday tool for him. This was a defining moment for me. It made me realize that common society is now using ChatGPT for everyday use, and it will continue to grow from here. Moral of this post, get serious about using ChatGPT for your business. There are so many areas that can make your life better, content creation, client acquisition, so on and so forth. The key is knowing how to use it. So I'm going to help you with that. I have a video lesson in my coaching program called How to Create Profitable Content on LinkedIn that Attracts Buyers Using ChatGPT. This is a lesson that only my clients have access to, but I'll give it to you for totally free. If you'd like access to this video training, just comment ChatGPT below and I'll send it over to you. So I want to I want you to see this post. So the reason this post, I was able to make $15,000 from this post alone, I'll tell you why. First, I told a story. I want you to understand, like, stories are what convert. I see so many, okay, this is the best piece of advice I could possibly give you on content. Stop teaching. Stop trying to, stop creating lessons. If you, let me put it this way. If your content can be Googled, it's not good. It's not good for social media. It's not good for LinkedIn, right? You don't want to be like five ways to, you know, reduce cholesterol, right? That, that does, it's, people go to Google for that kind of content. They'll search that kind of content, right? Social media is you need to entertain and educate at the same time. So what did I do? I entertained. I told a story. I was at Starbucks. I heard a couple in their 50s or 60s talking about ChatGPT. This shows that the whole world is using it. Then I, you know, that's ed entertaining and education. And then I simply said, and then this is the key. I made a call to action, right? You need to have a call to action. You need to direct your audience somewhere. Your audience is not going to buy if they're not directed somewhere, right? The purpose of your content is to direct people to its next destination. In this case, I said, I built a training that only my clients have access to on how to use ChatGPT to create content on LinkedIn. If you'd like access, comment ChatGPT below. Look at people were just commenting ChatGPT left, right, and center, right? Requesting it, asking questions, everything like that. And all I did was I was just sending it over to these people. Now, what ended up happening is I ended up sending it to, I think, about 25 people. And of the 25 people that I sent it over to, I think we booked six sales calls. Of the six sales calls, we closed three, collected $15,000 in cash in like 24 or 48 hours of, of making, of publishing this content, right? Do you see what I'm saying? But had I, I want to be very clear here. Had I said, ChatGPT is very important. You should get clients, you know, you should be using ChatGPT to get clients. This, 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 this. I guarantee you I wouldn't have had the conversion rate I did. Right? You have to learn how to entertain. Right? You have to learn how to get people excited. Right? And this is this is why story posts work well. 
right? They're very, 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 very important. I see everyone writing chat GPT in the chat. <laughs> All right, don't worry. Um, that's funny. Okay, cool. So, but is this making sense when I talk about content like this, right? The goal is to drive, drive the traffic. So now with this being said, I want to actually show you another thing as well with, 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 with everything that we're going through right now. Remember, not if sometimes, and again, I want you to understand content is a very dynamic thing in the sense that yes, story posts work really well. And again, if you want some, some hard numbers, 80% of your posts on LinkedIn 80% of your posts on LinkedIn should have a call to action. So if you publish five times per week, four of those five posts should be directing people somewhere, right? Now, not, and again, I want you to just like kind of think of this like um, just with some common sense as well, right? If you're if if you're just doing a feel good post of, you know, Thanksgiving dinner with my family this weekend, enjoying my, enjoying my time, you don't put a call to action, you know, it'd be like, by the way, if you want this, go by the, no, don't do that. You know what I mean? If you're just showing a feel good post, like, Hey, you know, take care of everyone. Enjoy the holidays. This, 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 that's fine. That's cool. You should be building an emotional connection with your audience. You don't need a call to action on that. But the majority should have a call to action. Okay. So let's continue here. Um, so I just wanted to make sure everyone got that with the content, everything of that nature. Okay. Good, good stuff. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's keep going here. All right, so now we're going to go into the actual conversion system, right? Like, how do we start converting people now into actual buyers? Because now you know, like I said, you know how to get the people interested. You get that part. That part's like easy enough, right? With the content, the traffic. Now comes the conversion system. So let me actually show you how the conversion system works. Can everyone see my screen again? Just give me a thumbs up. Yep. Okay. I see you, Sherry. I see you, Susan. Okay. Awesome. So now comes the conversion system itself, right? So remember this, like I was saying, the goal, your content and all, all three here, all three are connected. Your traffic is connected to your content. Your content is connected to your conversion system, right? If you have the best content, but no traffic, nobody look at it. The content falls on deaf ears, right? If you have the best content, but no conversion system, well, great. You're going to become an, in, uh, you're going to become what, what I call it, call it broke influencer syndrome, right? Where you have all these likes and comments on your post, but you're not making any money. Right. You have to understand you have to make money to, 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 to like have a successful business. Sometimes we lose sight of that. Right. We get too excited with the vanity metrics, the likes, the comments. Forget about that. Some of my best posts, some of my most profitable posts got like six likes. Right. You just have to understand how to convert the audience. Right. That's exactly what we're going to go into right now as well. OK, cool. So duh, 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 let's keep going. OK, so conversion. Now I'm going to show you how I'm what I'm what I'm doing on a daily basis here. So I'm publishing content every single day on LinkedIn. I publish a lot. I publish about 10 to 15 times per week, right? So the fact that I'm publishing 10 to 15 times per week, but I'll tell you exactly what's happening. When I publish 10 to 15 times per week, I'll get anywhere between on a slow week, 5,000 views on a, on a good week, anywhere up to like 20,000. So I'll get anywhere between five to 20,000 views. And again, the numbers are not that, that important. Well, what's more important is more the target audience. But what I'm trying to do with all this content that I'm publishing on LinkedIn, I only have one goal, right? Beyond everything else, I want people to go look at my profile. That's the natural next step someone will do if your content's good, right? They will go and look at your profile. So what happens when they come to my profile? So they'll come to my profile here. And my goal every single day is to get as many people as I possibly can watching this free training video. That's it. That's all I'm trying to do. So look at this. So someone will come. So after they see my content, they'll come to my LinkedIn profile. They'll they'll click on this button right here, right? And they will put in their name and email, right? So I'll just put mine here. This is not my email, by the way. I don't have this email. Just don't, don't email me here. <laughs> so um, okay. So after they after they after I get their name and email, great. I save that in my list. This is cool. Then they're going to watch this 10 minute training video. So this 10 minute training video is pure value. It's pretty much similar to what we were talking about, like right now on this call, right? Just shorter, more condensed. It's only about 10 minutes or so. And I'm teaching step by step by step how to get clients. I'm teaching them how to get a specific end result. So here is the goal. Pick a quantifiable end result to teach. This is very important for your free training. Don't just say, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to break through. I'm going to teach you how to break your limiting beliefs. Not good. Very hard to sell on that. Find some angle. And I understand some of you are mindset coaches. Some of you are high performance coaches. 
find some form of quantifiable angle to teach. If I was a high performance coach, I'd say learn how to save an extra 10 hours per week while maintaining or increasing your income. Boom, that's a quantifiable end result. If I was a mindset coach, I would still I would say learn how to break free from your limiting beliefs so that you can get that job promotion, so that you can do this, right? I understand you're not targeting your whole audience, but the more speed, the more quantifiable you are with that end result, the more people are going to watch this, right? Then at the end, what I'll do is I'll teach this lesson, right? Again, keep it short, 10 minutes, no more, just straight value. Then at the end of the video, I simply make an offer for a call. I say, hey, look, if you liked what you learned in this video and you want to sit down with me one-on-one -on, -one on a call to learn about how I can help you even more, book a call. This button pops up right here. It says schedule my call now, right? Can you all see the schedule my call now button? Yeah, okay. They'll click on this. They'll go to, you know, they'll find a time. So let's just say, you know, they pick a time here. We ask them some qualifying questions and then bang, a call is booked, right? I'll, I'll even run you through the whole process. So again, not my email, FYI. But let's say I ask them some qualifying questions, go through there, go through there, and then click schedule event. Then as soon as the call is confirmed, great, that's officially a sales call now in the calendar, confirmed. Then to warm them up even more, I take them to a testimonial page where they can see some of my client results, right? So, and I try to make it a little bit diverse. Again, if you don't have a lot of testimonials right now, don't worry, this is only kind of like the cherry on top. So don't worry so, so much. But then I want to take them to a testimonial page after they book the call so they can see like, oh, look at all these great results, Sarum gets his clients, this is great. Think about how warm somebody's going to be by the time they get on the call after this whole process. Why? Because we just nurtured them the entire way through. How did we, first of all, from the very beginning, right? Remember what we did at the very beginning. What did we do for traffic? We went and found the highest quality potential buyers, right? The highest quality. That that started us off with a great foundation. Second, we created high quality content that actually nurtured our audience, got them interested, and ultimately got them looking up to us, looking up looking up to us as if this person knows something that I don't know to get me to the goal that I need to get to, right? So that's the content. And then the conversion system, what did we do? We led with value. We taught, we gave, and then we made the offer. So with this being said, right, let's go back to our goal of five new clients by the end of the month. Remember that, right? So here's the numbers behind all this. So you, every week, the goal should be to get about 10 to 20 people to watch this video. And I'm telling you, it's a lot easier than you think. When you, with the right content, that's like one to two people per day or two to three people per day watching this video, right? You get two to three people watching this video it, per week. If you can get literally 15% of those people to book a call, that's only three calls. So I'm not asking for some grandiose guys. You need everybody who watches the video to book a call here, right? So if you can get three calls per week from this, great. So now you have about seven to 17 people who didn't book a call, but watch the video. Then you can follow up. Then you can message them, right? Here's the thing. It's not a cold message anymore, right? If you go and you message somebody, right? Let's say, um, you know, Susan, you watched my training video, right? Hypothetically, right? You want to watch my training video right now, but you didn't book a call with me. It wouldn't be an interruption. It wouldn't be me kind of coming out of nowhere being like, hey, Susan, What's up? I could message you and I and because you've stepped into my ecosystem, you've kind of it's kind of like when you walk into a retail store. You walked into the retail store, that's why they asked, "Hey, can I help you with anything?" Right? If the answer is no, no problem. We're not going to push anymore. But what I'll do is I'll say, "Hey Susan, I saw you watch my training video about how to get more clients from LinkedIn. You know, what in particular were you looking for? I'd be happy to point you in the right direction." Maybe me and Susan get into a bit of a dialogue together. Susan tells me she's like, you know, she's trying to scale her business to twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. I say, great. Well, you know, I still have a couple spots available if you'd like to book a call with me. Great. So now I can book another two to three calls. And then guess what happens? Now, goal achieved. Five calls scheduled. If we can get a close at a 20% close rate, that's one sale, that's one call converted. If we can close at a 35% close rate, that's like pretty much one to two calls converted into paying clients. Right? And this is it. This is literally the name of the game here. Now, the whole idea of client acquisition on LinkedIn is specifically this, right? Is specifically this. You get the traffic, you get the con you create the content to nurture your audience, and you convert them. And you just repeat the system over and over and over again, and you just get better at it, right? I'll, I'll be honest, probably your first swing at this may not go as well as you hope, but you'll get better, and you'll get better, and you'll get better. These are the fundamentals of marketing, right? This is how people grow. Like I'm telling you, when I was at this event last week, like everyone was saying the same thing. Where do you get your traffic from? 
What's your content strategy like? What's your conversion system like? So I don't care whether you're making $3,000 a month or $3 million a month. These are the same processes. This is the same process that you're going to need to go through. So you got to figure out, okay, where are my buyers on LinkedIn? What's the, what's the content that I'm going to nurture them with? Where am I going to take them to? How am I going to book calls? Set those goals. One thing I do with my clients every single month, every single month, the first day of, of the month, I sit down and we have a goal setting call. And I literally pull up. I'm like, okay, guys, everyone, write this down for your own self. What's your goal this month? Right? So somebody will say $20,000 a month. I'll say, okay, cool. Your goal is 20K this month. What's your price point? How many calls? How, how many sales do you need? How many calls do you need to book? We figure that out on the first day of every single month on our calls. Then once we figure that number out, then it's what activities need to be done in order to achieve the goal of this many calls, right? Once we figure that number out, then it's just execution mode the rest of the month. And then boom. And then what you do is you do this the entire month. And then finally, at the end of the month, you just look and you just, you determine did the activities equate to the result that I was achieve, uh, looking to achieve? And here's the thing. If you set a goal for 20K per month and you miss it for whatever reason, you just miss it and you and you will get 17 or 15K, that's still a pretty good month. You know what I mean? Like shoot for the moon. And if you miss, you still land among the stars here, right? So look at, look at it like this. Like you have to, but I'm telling you, this is all a numbers game. And everything I've just thought is rooted in client attraction, right? This is all about client attraction right? Nothing about what I just taught you right now is messaging random people who don't know you, pitching your services, like nothing. It doesn't need to be that way. In fact, I really think, I, and I know this, coaching is not a is is not a, is not a niche where you kind of just DM people and offer them some like enterprise services, right? That's the, that you, that you, maybe if you worked in corporate, that's something you do in corporate sales or things like that. But in coaching, no, they need to like and trust you. So anyway, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the system, right? That is how you're going to get five clients per month with your coaching business. But I want you to actually take this and actually apply it. I want you to actually do this more than anything else because this is what's going to work. Now, obviously, you know, I would be lying if I said, you know, everything here is exactly, you know, step by step. I mean, everything I did teach you is exactly what you need, but there's obviously, you know, more to it as well. Like, what have, how do you improve your connection request acceptance rate? How do you improve the rate of the amount of people watching your VSL? All of that kind of stuff. So there is obviously, now you've learned the fundamentals of what needs to be done and even a bit of how we showed in, we walked into that, but there's still like the whole process of getting you there and optimizing this to get you at that level. So with that, with that being said, obviously, as I promised to everybody here, I can see who's still here on the call. So I will give everybody that group coaching call that I had with my clients about the five uh, the types of content you should be publishing to get your buyers. So don't worry, that's all yours. I'm giving that away. So in order to get that, all I'm not, because there's just so many people in this call, just send me a message on LinkedIn after this call. Say, hey, I was at the training. Do you mind sending me? Uh, do you mind sending me the training video and I'll personally deliver it to you? So don't worry, I'll send it like literally right away. So just send me a DM, let me know you were here and uh, I'll make sure to get that to you. So yes, again, thank you all for coming as well. I hope you enjoyed the, the training today. Again, if you remember, if you want this uh, recording, just send me a message or not the recording. If you want the, the lesson of the group coaching call uh, that I promised about the types of content to publish, just send me a message on LinkedIn. And again, don't forget to uh, book a call with me. I promise you, I see a few, a few others of you, uh, Ellen booked the call as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Really looking forward to speaking with you. I promise you. Um, super excited for those of you who do end up working with me. This is going to be the ride of a lifetime. I'm excited to take your business to that six figure level, multi six figure, whatever that might be, work with you. Um, and go from there. So again, thanks a lot for coming, everybody.